When you begin designing an fMRI experiment, you may be asking yourself whether you have the best design. Let's say you already have a behavioral study that gives you a really robust behavioral effect and now you want to adapt it for an fMRI experiment. In this case, let's also assume you have a fixed number of conditions and a fixed number of trials due to budget or time constraints. And you're also using what's called an event-related design, which is what most people use these days. In this case, you have a random amount of time between trials, also known as jitter and this amount of time you do have control over. So how should you best distribute the amount of jitter between trials? This brings us to a topic called efficiency, which can be thought of as the inverse of variance. Now to increase efficiency and to reduce our uncertainty or variance about the estimate of the bold response, we need to sample along the curve of the bold response, and most importantly, differentially sample along the bold response to get as many different parts of that curve as possible. This allows you to better estimate the individual hemodynamic responses that lead to the convoluted bold signal that you measure from the scanner. Given the same number of subjects, trials, and conditions, Optimizing this timing schedule between trials can lead to huge gains in statistical power or the ability to detect an effect that is actually there. And we can find this optimal design using a software package called Optimize X, developed by Bob Spunt. To get started, go to www.bobspunt.com slash easyoptimizex and then click on Download Zip from the menu bar on the left. When it has finished downloading, unzip the package, and then move it to your home directory and add it to your MATLAB path by opening a MATLAB terminal and typing these commands. You can find them in the More Info box down below. This will create the folders Optimize X and the subfolder Demo in your home directory. The scripts to run Optimize X will be placed in the Optimize X folder. And we have the subdirectory into which we can write our example timing schedules. We then add the path, and then we navigate to this demo directory. If you then type Optimize X GUI, you should now see the main input dialog. Many of the fields are intuitive, such as TR, number of conditions, high pass filter, number of trials, and so on. More details about the other fields can be found on the Optimize X website. For now, leave the defaults as they are and then click OK. You will then be prompted to enter the number of contrasts of interest. Let's enter 2 and click OK. You will then be able to enter the contrast that you would most like to optimize, along with how important they are relative to each other. For example, we might be interested in comparing regressors 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 with these example contrast vectors. And let's also say we want to give more weight to the first contrast than the second contrast. Keep in mind that these are simply placeholders, since we haven't loaded any actual data. These are just simulations. If you click OK, Optimize X will begin simulating many designs, as many as you specified earlier, or as many as it is able to get done within the time limit that you entered. We're going to fade out and come back when it has finished. When it has completed, you will see a figure depicting the best design matrix according to Optimize X. Let's begin by evaluating the optimized design that you just created. Within your current directory, your design should have been saved in a subdirectory called best designs underscore and then the date when you ran these simulations. Navigate into that directory and you will see it contains both .txt and CSV files, essentially the same thing, containing timing schedules for the top five designs that you specified. You also see a structure called designinfo.mat, which you can load by typing load designinfo. This structure 
contains two variables, design and params. They contain information for each of the designs that you generated. In particular, the design matrix is stored in a field called X. And here's the code you can use to load the first design in that particular cell, and then display it in a figure minus the intercept term that you saw previously. With this design matrix, you can also, for example, look at the correlation between the regressors and the variance inflation factor by using this following code. R is a correlation coefficient, showing pairwise correlations between each of the regressors. As a general rule of thumb, anything below negative 0.4 or above positive 0.4 indicates a moderate correlation and something you might want to look into in more detail. This code also calculates the variance inflation factor, or VIF, which is a measure of how much the variance in each regressor is inflated due to collinearity. For now, however, we are most interested in the efficiency of the design. In particular, we want the diagonal elements of this matrix, each of which corresponds to a predictor in our design. This code will calculate the efficiency. And notice that these numbers are unitless measurements and can only be compared to other similar designs. While higher efficiency for each regressor is a good thing, what we are typically interested in are contrasts. When you ran the Optimize X script previously, you gave it the contrasts that you wanted to optimize, which are now saved in the variable params L. You can then use those in a new formula and calculate the efficiency of each contrast and store it in a variable called EFF cons. Notice here we're using the same code as above and adapting it to only look at the efficiency for each contrast of which we have two in this design. Note that the first contrast has higher efficiency than the second one reflecting the greater weight that we gave it in the Optimize X graphical user interface. So which design should we use? If we look at all the possible designs and we open the first one, called the best one by Optimize X, we see the timing schedule already written for us. All you need to do is replace these condition numbers with the actual conditions in your experiment and then import these ONSA times into the presentation software of your choice, such as ePrime. But should you use the exact same sequence of trials for each block in your experiment? Think about whether predictability or boredom might become a problem, or whether there's some other confound that you haven't anticipated. One possible solution to this is to run many thousands of simulations, take the top five or six, or however many blocks there are per subject in your design, and then rotate them through each subject using a Latin squares sequence, which can counterbalance for the effect of ordering blocks between subjects. In any case, once you have an efficient design, think hard about whether this is the one that you want to use. This gets into a gray area, but subjectively, you'll need to see whether it feels right. Maybe run it on yourself outside the scanner and see whether it's eliciting the kind of phenomena that you are interested in studying. I can't speak for all different fields, but for example, look into something called the Grattan effect, which looks at conflict experiments, such as the Erickson Flanker task, and how there are different neural profiles and behavioral profiles elicited by incongruent following incongruent trials and congruent following congruent trials. In that case, if you wanted a wide distribution of different kinds of effects, you wouldn't want too many of one type of condition following the same condition. I can't give you any rules about what this means for your particular experiment, but I recommend talking to colleagues and other experts in your field to come up with something that seems right. As always, there's no substitute for experience.